Hello everybody. Today I'm going to be doing a follow-up video on my Raspberry Pi 3 model version B+. Now if you watched my first video on this uh, device, you saw that I was having a power issue with it. I was having an undervoltage error on boot up and I was having the undervoltage uh, lightning or power issue uh, warning in the top right hand corner when I was on the Raspbian desktop. Now, why is that a problem? Well, it's a problem because once you see that warning, the device powers, it, well, turns itself down. It goes into a safe mode. It slows down in order to adapt to the low power situation that it's living in. And you never want that. You want this thing to run as fast as possible. So I thought I fixed it by changing the USB cable to a more robust uh, USB cable and it did seem to adjust the situation. In other words, I wasn't getting it as much. I wasn't getting it on every boot. But once in a while, I still got that yellow lightning bolt in top right-hand corner. And that was driving me nuts. That was problem number one with, with my uh, power supply on this thing. Now, second problem was is that I had to plug it, the power into the micro USB port to, to power, power it on and power it off or turn it on and off using a switch on the USB uh, uh, port. And I didn't want to do that anymore. I wanted a dedicated power supply for this. Number one reason being, I wanted adequate power. And number two, I wanted an on and off switch so that, I would, so that it was able to be turned on and off all at this, you know, at any time that I wanted. Now, what I came up with for a solution is this uh, popular power supply. I got this one from Amazon. This is a North Pata AC adapter. And I bought it for under $10 on Amazon. Now I understand prices is subject to change. So it may change in price, but I will link it in the video description below and the buyer I bought it from on Amazon. And also uh, it's available on eBay, uh, though I have did not buy it on eBay. I will put a link for it in the video description for the people who only have access or want to buy it on eBay. Now I'm gonna test it out, see how it performs and see if it solves my problem. The first thing I noticed when I got the package was the actual packaging. I thought it was very clever. Uh, it's in almost what like a what an MRE type of package, but it's it it's a Ziploc bag. It's sealed. So if you know anything about stuff that's coming from China, it usually comes in container ships and it's exposed to sea air most of the time from uh, dock to dock, which means they're going across the ocean. And uh, this is definitely going to protect this uh, device from any of that salt air. So that's a really nice. Uh, plus on this thing and as you can see it's nicely packaged um, impressed with that I thought that was very clever so let's open it up see what we get inside and, and just as an aside on this I did buy another power supply from eBay for the same price by the way and uh, it just didn't even come close to measuring up to this one but uh, I'll show you that one and that's this thing right here um, and it has the same type of model number, 0530 number. Uh, I'll compare the two a little bit because I just this is just inferior. It didn't even give me the right amount of power and it required to run uh, my Raspberry Pi. So it failed my test, so I didn't even review it. I don't, I don't do reviews that are bad, but I'll show it to you and uh, compare it to this one, which I know is a performer. So uh, again, that's the... We're dealing with the North Pata uh, AC adapter, and uh, this is for the Raspberry Pi B Plus, uh, Pi 3 B Plus. So uh, we've got the package out here. Let's uh, let's weigh it up, see how much it weighs. Okay, 105, 100, sorry, 100.5 or 0.6 uh, grams, or in ounces, 3.5 ounces, which is more or less the same weight as the shoddy. Uh, device that I got from uh, eBay, the first one, and uh, yeah, yeah, so that's the weight. Let's do a little measurement here, and let's go on, start with millimeters, 46 millimeters in width, height, um, 74 and 0.5. In thickness at its thickest point from the wall plug will be 36, uh, almost 37 millimeters. So, yeah, standard cord, I believe, is the cord length is actually 58 inches or 4 feet 10 inches. And when compared to the other um, cheap, well, the other power supply which failed my test, uh, 
it actually has a long, this one has actually a longer cord by 15 inches. So, you know, this costs the same amount as this failed power supply that didn't do the job and has a longer power cord. Now compare the two so you can see it. Now uh, also physically look at, at the size of the power pack and you can see that it's smaller too. So this, this is the one that uh, is the North Pata. This is the no name. I'm not gonna uh, get into who and where I bought this on eBay, but just uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm pushing the North Pata here. And the input is again, uh, 100 to 240 volts on the North Pata. Same over here and uh, AC up to and then three amp output at 50 or 60 Hertz. Uh, same exact uh, outputs. Everything is the same uh, except that they're not physically the same as you can see. And this one here sucks compared to the North Pata, which did, uh, you know, which I've already tested, but worked great. And I'll show you all that in a minute. But again, physically bigger. This one, the, the failure. Uh, Cord is longer on the North Pata than the one on this one. And I'll show you some more physical differences here. As you can see the size difference. And uh, you know, it's it's just better. So uh, there's one difference, a cord. The cords are, are another difference, as you know, or just stated, the, this cord is uh, 15 inches longer than this one. And another thing is when we, I'm gonna compare the two switches between the North Pata here and the El Cheapo, which I paid the same price as the North Pata uh, for. And I got the North Pata again on, on Amazon. I got this one on eBay. So Amazon got quick, got uh, to me quicker uh, and uh, this one did not. So let's compare the switches next. Okay, first thing to note here is that the, the power uh, switch on the North Pata is closer to the actual plug than the other uh, generic that I bought from eBay, so that's the first thing to notice. I kind of like that because it's closer to the actual device. Uh, so next we're going to get into the physical attributes of the switch itself. So you got North Pata is on this side and the generic from eBay is over here. And notice right off the bat, number one size difference, it's uh, the North Pata is a little bigger. That's nice. The North Pata has a rubber uh, uh, cup or, or dome over the switch. The other one has just got the switch sticking out of the plastic. and and another thing about the North Pata, it's got a power LED on it. So you'll know before you plug it in whether the uh, actual uh, switch is on the on position or the off position. This one here, you don't know. It could be on when you plug it in, it could be off. You don't know. Really the only way to find out is to plug it in. So there's a big plus, the LED, uh, a, a, a rubber sealed uh, plug, uh, power switch, uh, size is a little bigger too. Uh, construction looks really nice. You look at the other one, you see that it, you, you can really see the seam on it. Looks like it's going to come apart uh, on that side anyways. You know, not the greatest. The, it just all the way around the North Pata is just a better looking switch. And uh, yeah, it's cl a clicky type of switch. Both are. You can hear them. And North Pata, again, has that big plus with the LED. So it beats it on the LED. So all the way around, a better uh, switch. So I like that. Next, we're gonna plug it into the uh, Raspberry Pi and we're gonna test it out. I wanna show you quickly how I have my meter connected to the Raspberry Pi so that we get a true internal voltage uh, of the Raspberry Pi. And what I've got is I've got two leads connected to the GPIO header or connector, which has uh, five volts and ground coming out of it actually has two five uh, volt pins on it uh, two and four and uh, I currently have a fan connected to the pin four and the ground beside it so I connect it to pin two with the positive uh, and put that to my meter and I connect it to pin 39 which is a ground uh, on the GPIO and uh, that's the negative of course and what I'm going to do is power this up and show you what's going on in the meter while it's powered up uh, but currently, I just wanted to show you that. And I'll, I'll zoom in here a little closer so you can see what's going on. So, uh, yeah, once again, pin 2, positive 5 volts. Pin 39, negative uh, or ground. And that's going to be uh, hooked up straight to my meter. So, next thing we're going to do is power this up. And I'll show you the boot process and uh, look for that little lightning bolt. And uh, see if we get it or we don't. And I'll show you the, the uh, meter readings while that is happening. I wanted to start from the desktop and you can see currently that we're at 
0.35.36 volts and running nicely no lightning bolt on the top right hand corner and the reason i started here is i wanted to do a whole reboot and capture it all so that you can see that i don't get a lightning bolt all the way through so let's do that let's go through the reboot process here go to the raspberry button and uh, shut down and i'm just going to hit reboot there we go and we go through the process of rebooting and you can see the voltage varying here now I will put links to this stuff in the video description below. There is the boot screen, the primary one, uh, you know, for all this stuff in the video description below, including the meter, uh, so that you guys can get them from where I got them, you know, from the sellers that I got them from. And you can see it's booting just fine. No lightning bolt anywhere. Everything's cool. Uh, I don't see any errors. There we go. Straight back to the desktop. Still at 5.35, 5.32, oh, 2.9. So it went down a little bit there on the boot process, but no big deal. I'm well well above five. And again, the uh, device has not noticed that there's anything wrong or any power issue. So let's start putting a load on it. Now, first thing I'm going to do here is uh, open up a, well, actually, let me show you the pinout uh, command. Pretty neat and handy thing to know about. Uh, you saw that GPIO port over here with all the pins. And uh, if you open up your command line terminal here, that's, I'm clicking that open and we're gonna have to stretch it out a bit here so I'll do that there we go and in the command line if you type in pin out pin out you'll get a graphic of all the pins so there you have all the pinouts and where they correspond and of course I I'm connected to pin 2 and pin 39 ground and 5 volts that's how I'm getting the voltage off the, the actual device so we'll just minimize this out of the way uh, actually well we'll leave that there for now uh, let's uh, start putting a load on it let's uh, um, hmm what shall we do let's open up the browser see if that does anything to the voltage doesn't look like it's really pushing it there we go let's do a restore and in the restore you'll probably get a video of me here so I'm gonna mute that so we don't get any there we go. So there I am, a video on YouTube running on the desktop. Uh, mine, of course. So we don't get into any copyright issues. Again, voltage, 5.32 there. And let's open up. Oh, okay. I have a program I'm going to run which uh, maxes out the CPU. And you can see the CPU running here in the top right-hand corner on that little meter. So let's uh, use my program here that's going to basically stress test the uh, CPU to 100%. So I'm going to hit enter here. And you can see that automatically the, the CPU running at 100% brought the voltage down to 5.25 volts. But big deal, you know. Uh, still well within range. No lightning bolt in the top right-hand corner. Power supply doing exactly what it's supposed to do. And processor working as hard as it can. You can see that it's at 100% over here. Still running the video. Still running my stress test down here. Temperature on the CPU is going to rise because I'm cranking it. It's at 39.7 C right now, 40. So it's it's rising. So I'm going to keep an eye on that. Um, all right. So so far so good. Let's put something on it on the. Let's put a load on it. I'm going to use my uh, Note 4 here. I'm going to plug it in to the USB port, which will will begin begin a charging process on that. So that'll draw some ju juice. So let's do that here. Plug it in, and uh, show you that here. So you guys can see it. Ta-da! You can see that it's charging. Charge, uh, charge light up there. Let's see if I can turn it off. The charge is gone. Charge back on. Okay, so my Note 4 is now charging. I'm at down to 5.15. I've got the CPU at 100%. I'm going to hit cancel on that. And you can see the temperature is going up, 41.9 uh, C there. But still, everything's still working, 5.15. Uh, it's charging my cell phone. Uh, let's add one more device, and this is going to be heavy duty. Uh, I'm going to connect an external Seagate uh, drive, this thing right here, which is also a Wi-Fi, uh, uh, sort of a media player kind of deal, 500 gig drive. So let's plug it in and see what we get. But so far, so good, right? Pretty good, 5.15, no, no uh, lightning symbol at the top right. There we go. 
Ooh, that drag it, dragged it down a little bit. 4.99. But again, realize what this thing is doing right now. It's at 100% uh, processing the CPU. Uh, CPU is now up to 42.9. Uh, I've got a cell phone that's charging off one of the USB ports. I've got a USB mouse and a USB, sorry, a USB uh, keyboard and a wireless mouse plugged in. And this device, which is a uh, external hard drive being powered only by the uh, port. So perfectly good at this point. So yeah, there's my complete stress test on this power supply. And so far, awesome. I don't have any problem. Uh, everything's working right. Let's, let's close this window out, cancel it. There we go. And you can see my video is still playing in the background. And my CPU is 100%, 42.9C right now, 43.5. Hasn't locked up. Everything's working. Yeah, yeah. And no lightning symbol at the top right-hand corner indicating any kind of power issue. Yeah, so the North Pada AC adapter. Again, highly recommended. I have no problem recommending it. And I'm very happy I got it because it can run all this stuff at once and not run to a power problem. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you need anything better than that for your Raspberry Pi. So uh, let's go and uh, shut this down. And then we're, I'm going to wrap this up. That's it for my video on the North Pata AC adapter for the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus. Seriously impressed with this uh, power supply. Can't recommend it enough. Uh, basically, it's still running right now and amazing. I had it at 100% CPU with the uh, Note 4. Now, by the way, that Note 4 uh, cell phone has a 10,000 milliamp hour cell that it's charging at the same time. Uh, the external hard drive I used has a battery built into it because it's a media playing device and a computer and a Wi-Fi interface as well as a hard drive itself that it's running at the same time. And this thing managed to run all that at 100% CPU load without any problem whatsoever. Never saw the lightning bolt uh, error in the top right hand corner of the screen and it continues to work to this moment uh, just like I loaded it. So yeah. Can't recommend this enough for the Raspberry Pi uh, 3, and I'll put links to it in the video description below for everybody so you can buy it from the same sellers that I bought it from, okay? That's it for my video. If you like this video and it helped you out in some way, do me a huge favor and click on the like button in the bottom right-hand corner and give me a big thumbs up. That helps my channel, it helps my video, and I greatly appreciate it. Also, up here in the top right-hand corner, you should see a picture of me. That picture is a subscription link. If you click on that, and uh, you'll be subscribed to my channel, number one. Number two, part of the process of, of subscribing to my channel will be the option to click the bell icon. And if you click on the bell icon, you'll be notified every time I put up new content on YouTube, and then you can watch it at your own leisure. Once again, and like always, I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank you for your time and for your support.